All right, guys, so basically, I decided to give this a shot. trip this weekend with some of our church groups so I decided why not videotape me prepping um, the food and getting it ready um, there's only one big ring and that's only for like the community time so for the most part all the cooking has to be done in your camper and with it's supposed to be very humid I decided I wanted to get all the cooking done um, today um, at home and then all we have to do is warm up anything that needs done um, in the microwave. So that way we're not heating this up and uh, making it happen. So I'm supposed to take six diced onions just for like the community brunch um, on Sunday. Like I said, it's with our church group, so pretty much everybody in the church group is going, and everybody else is supposed to meet us there for church um, together. And so I'm supposed to take six of these, um, and that's what I'm going to be getting ready now. All right, so after I finished these onions, I cut up one more off of camera just to let you know. And half of that onion I'm going to be putting into a skillet to cook in order to make some calzones. So also I'm adding one pound of Italian sausage. You guys can use any type of filling that you like, but I just went with a protein and onion to keep it simple for camping. Um, this Italian sausage I get at Aldi's and it's actually really good. Now, to make the calzones even easier, I'm just going to be using a package of crescent rolls. And since it says 375, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to set my oven to preheat and then I am going to get started on cooking that filling up and unrolling these rolls. Once the sausage and the onions are cooked all the way through, I am just going to be pouring my sauce in until it has a nice coverage. So about two thirds of the pasta sauce. I just want enough where it's not going to be dry, but also where it's not going to ooze and goo out of our calzone packet. To make it easier, I just add the cheese right into my meat and onion mixture. Um, this way it's stuck in the sauce and it won't be trying to fall out quite as quickly. And then the cheese will likewise make it where the meat will be somewhat more integrated and stuck inside the sauce as well. Um, and so this just makes it a lot easier to load. 
So once that cheese starts to melt and become a binding agent for the sausage, you're going to dish out about one third of a cup onto a um, crescent roll triangle in order to make these calzones. So one nice thing about using the crescent rolls for your calzone dough is it cuts out a lot of unnecessary time. So you don't need to use butter or an egg wash. They have enough fat in them already to become golden brown and to already stick to each other. So you're just literally gonna have to pinch down these edges. And then on that side that is longer, you're gonna take the corner of the narrow triangle in order to have enough dough to pinch that edge in as well. And that's all you do. So I'm gonna do three of them off camera and then they look like this. And then I'm gonna put them in the oven that I already had preheated to 375 degrees. And I'm going to cook these for 15 minutes. Um, so basically I added about four minutes to the time recommended on the crescent roll dough because I am using a pizza stone instead of a cookie sheet. So it does take a little bit more time. And then the rest of this mixture, I'm going to just stick in a container and put it in the freezer for pasta later on. So I'm going to be making a breakfast bake while the calzones are cooking. So I am going to be just adding this breakfast sausage to the other half of that onion and cook it all the way through while the calzones are cooking. When the calzones come out, this is what it looks like. As you can see, they are very flaky and golden brown and I just add them to glass containers and make sure that they are sealed in order to keep them about as fresh as possible. Back to the breakfast mixture, I'm going to take four eggs and add about a cup and a half to two cups of cheddar cheese. And then I'm going to add the cooked breakfast sausage to that and give it a stir until it is very thoroughly mixed. I apologize for the camera moving so much. I'm going to have to get better at figuring out how to um, video the food. But after that, I'm going to add about a cup and a half to two cups of milk. And this is just hit or miss. It's basically just enough to make sure that it is very thoroughly um, wet in order to add the pancake mix to it and just make sure that the pancake mix will be fully saturated and not um, dry. So you're gonna add two cups of the pancake mix and just mix it all the way through. If you have to add a little bit of milk, that is fine, but what you want is a very thick batter, but you don't want to have any dry pancake dust in it. The reason why I'm not giving you exact measurements on the milk is because Honestly, it's going to be slightly different for each pancake or baking mix that you are using. I'm just using the Aldi brand of baking mix. Um, it's like their version of Bisquick, um, but every single one's going to be slightly different. So as you can see on the corner, there's a little bit of moisture still coming up. So I'm just adding a tad bit more and giving that a good stir. And you're going to want to um, do it until it gets to a texture that looks like this. So as you can see, it's very thoroughly mixed, but there's no dry powder and it's pretty thick, so it will stick on your spatula. Um, so I have an eight by eight square pan here and I am just going to add it straight in. I did not add any um, sort of oil. You are very more than welcome to add it, but I find that there's enough moisture in mine that it seems to Cook well but again that's going to be based off of everybody's um, baking mix every single one's gonna act differently so if you want to oil it go right ahead One reason why I like making these breakfast um, muffins or bake is just because it is very high protein and it has um, a good amount of stuff in it that it's going to really keep you full throughout the morning while you're camping and working. Um, and it will last multiple days without getting soggy or crazy dry. So I do really recommend these if you want to have a pre-made breakfast for camping. Like I said, we will not have a fire ring um, this time around. So this will just make sure we have a good hearty breakfast to do all of our activities 
without the need to eat crazy amounts or have a lot of stuff to store it in. So I'm going to cook it at 375 for 24 minutes. Um, and I'm just going to stick it in. And while it's cooking, obviously I'm going to be working on even more food. All right, our son loves veggies, so I'm going to be making those croissant roll veggie pizzas that you see at a lot of like baby and bridal showers. Um, so I just have a full roll of crescent rolls and I just stuck them right into my nine by 13 pan. Again, they have tons of fat on them, so I did not um, oil this. And I'm just going to be pushing together and sealing up all of the edges until it covers all of the ground space. And then I'm going to just be sticking this into the oven at the recommended amount of time, which I believe is 12 minutes until it is golden brown and flaky. All right, so while that cooks, I'm just going to be prepping um, the cream cheese mixture, which is just going to be two packets of cream cheese. I do have a little bit of the whipped cream cheese left um, from uh, just using it on bagels and stuff. So I mean, I'm going to add that just to use it up before it goes bad, but you don't have to use the whipped cream cheese. You can just use softened cream cheese if you'd like. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of the Hillshire Farms ranch powder to it just because I like the extra flavor. Some people add ranch powder, some people do not, so do not feel that it is necessary. And then I'm going to cut up all of my veggies. Um, we are using things like tomatoes, carrots, um, broccoli, and some bell peppers, but you can switch out to your vegetables however you wish. And it is very delicious if you've never had it before. All right, so once I got finished um, doing that, the casserole came out, or the croissant rolls came out, I mean. Um, and so I'm just going to be spreading over that cream cheese mixture until there's a decently thick mixture. I don't want it to be thicker than about a quarter of an inch, but you want enough of it for you to be able to taste it. Um, and I'm just going to be spreading that over top and making sure that it goes to almost the edge of each one, but you do want to leave a slight, uh, like, thin um, crust line but you don't want it to be thicker than about a half an inch so this is what it looks like and then I'm just going to be layering on all of our vegetables which I said were things like tomatoes carrots bell peppers and broccoli today And then the best part is the cheddar cheese that you sprinkle on top and I just eyeball it and give it a quick push down just to make sure everything sticks and that you're not going to have loose edges when I'm feeding this to a young toddler. All right, so I have three of these suddenly pasta salad classics into this bowl that the pasta has already been cooked. And so I'm just going to add all of these seasoning packets that they come with, the oil's already in there. Um, this obviously isn't anything special, but I was supposed to take a pasta salad for one of our um, ones where we're meeting with the church group for the dinner. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure that there's enough to go around. Um, and then I also am going to be adding some vegetables to it to add a little bit more nutrition to it and make it stand out just a little bit more since I took the lazy route. Um, since I had all the other meal planning that I was supposed to do that day and I'm also going to be adding some cheddar cheese just to kind of like I said make it a little bit of my own while still cutting corners of the um, box pasta. All right so this is what we took that weekend. Um, we just warmed everything up in the microwave if it needed to be and the rest of the stuff we ate cold so other than some boiled chicken this is all of the food we ate and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.